Hello, Crew World. Today will be a day of talking about progress in Undo Redo as I reimagine the CLI. Now, I've been in the code mines working extremely hard, and I have some great progress to show you. I've also been rather surprised by the positive response from you all out there who want to see more of these video updates. These videos were meant to be a video diary of my crazy side project. And maybe I thought, after a few years of regular posting, I might have a decent number of subscribers who might like this kind of thing. Only in my wildest fantasy did I think I would get more than a thousand views. So, thank you to everyone who commented and discussed the project with me and watched the video. And yes, I am definitely going to keep on going. So let's keep going. Now, let's answer some questions. You all had a lot of interesting questions. So let's start with the security tartan. Some of you asked, how can you get a secret out of the CLI so you can use it somewhere else? Well, you can do it like this. You can change security mode using the insecure and secure commands, and then you can just show it. You can also save it to a local file and read it out from there. Easy. Now, commands. Another question is how commands are defined and how do I add new ones? Well, the CLI is tightly bound to a much larger project. I'll reveal the larger project in slices in ongoing videos, but what I can reveal now is, if you're a fan of Smalltalk, Linda, Plan 9, Cock, Cock, yes, Cock, yes, Cock, Tierra, and Oberon, you know, that kind of thing, then you might enjoy where I'm heading with this. Anyway, for now I'm working on the CLI. It provides the base user experience for interacting with the local client and server. I'm also working on the client shell that runs the commands, but more about that at the end of this video. When can I use it? This is not a general CLI, but it could be. It's tightly bound to my crazy project. More likely, I will contribute the design ideas to, to plugins for OhMyZSH or New Shell. That said, when my crazy project starts being able to do useful work, it will be open sourced. I will need all the help I can get, but it's not ready yet to be opened up. Now, let's get down to progress. The auto documentation presentation has come along nicely. I've done a lot of work in getting it working on narrow displays, narrow windows, and working out what happens when we wrap commands across multiple lines. There is one case I'm leaving for now when an argument wraps across multiple lines. I'm waiting for inspiration to hit. Maybe you have some ideas about this. I can think of a few ways to handle it. It's not too hard to, to add something in right now, but I think I can do better than my current proposed default. I've tidied up some of the rendering and refactored the code to make it more manageable. If you've been following along on Twitter, you might have seen my weekend in refactoring hell. I got there eventually. Now, one thing I added is the ability to navigate between command tokens using the tab keys. You can now tab and shift tab between tokens. But also, given that we have cursor keys that can go forwards and backwards one character at a time through the command, I figured, why not enter another dimension? So, now we can navigate around in the command line as if it was a short document. I like this. I've also added option flags and named arguments. This enables arguments to be entered out of normal command order. The main reason I added this was to be able to have option flags. I'm not sure if I will keep this as it does provide one vector for you to accidentally reveal a secret when a secret is being manually entered. Now, where I left on our previous episode, I was discussing undo and redo. I have that working. Let's dive into a demo. Here we have an empty state. Let's list our secrets. Nothing. Okay, now let's add a secret. Let's look at the environment. There it is. Okay, undo, undo, redo, redo. There it is back. Hmm, could it be a trick? Well, how about this? Let's create a secret. Let's save this as default. Let's create a new secret. And now save it as default, but force an overwrite. What is our secret? Undo, undo. What is our secret now? Now we've gotten back the secret we overwrote. Undo, undo. Now we have no secret saved. Okay, how about this? Start a server, connect, connect. We can't because we've already connected. We can't make that second connection. Undo that. 
say hello, the server returns with two scopes. Now, let's stop the server. Let's connect. Well, we can't, because the server's stopped and there's nothing there to answer the connection. Let's undo that connect. Now, let's undo stopping the server and say hello. Look, we're back with a running local server and we're connected. The state has been restored. Undo all of that, redo all of that, back to how we were. I like the way this works. I think you can see this could be very powerful and new way of operating. I would like to get to the point where this is something we can do without thinking, because I want to explore how do we think differently when we can just, we can just undo what we normally used to think couldn't be undone. Now, the tour system. I've added a basic tour system that will provide tutorials for how the system will work. I'm going to look at combining this with the macro recorder I demoed in the last video and turn it into a demo system that will aid in creating these videos and also be part of the tutorial system. Okay, and now to the shell. This is the execution model of how commands will be executed. The current version is very primitive and immediate. What I want is something that allows commands to be submitted and the running state to be in the environment. Do you know those animations of complex internal combustion engines? I want the execution model to be a state machine that can be observed and visually understood. Most importantly, stopped, rewound, suspended, stepped through and saved. So my plan is as follows. Now, this is a bit technical. I wish I had time to digest this down into smaller parts, but that would mean a longer video and my time is split between making these videos and doing the actual coding. I will try and make this more accessible in the future with animations, but this is my skill level at the moment. I'm still learning. I'm going to add compound statements as a feature. So a command entered into the command line can be like a sentence with logic, like a normal CLI can. These statements can be submitted and they're going to be added to a queue. That means that these statements can be sort of added and they'll be executed in the order in which they're added to the queue. Now, when execution is complete, a statement will be taken off the top of that queue and broken up into a set of structured sets of stacks on another stack, which is the command queue. To this end, I'm expanding the environment to allow three new modes. At the moment, it runs in a mode called MRU, most recently used at top. I'm adding LIFO, last in, first out, which is a kind of classic stack. This is useful for computing as you can push arguments onto the stack and then perform operations on these. You get recursion for free. Also, FIFO, first in, first out, which is a queue which is useful for queuing tasks in order. I've also added LRU, which is least recently used. This is useful for making sure resources are fairly distributed. And based on some feedback on Twitter, I'm going to look at adding MFU, which is the order of most frequently used. These basic primitive types will allow for a rich execution process. Now, when a statement is added to the stack, it will be pushed on as a stack of stacks. I'll create a rule so that the item at the top of the entity will be the one that is the top of the topmost stack. Can you see how the logical structure of the command is preserved on the stack? Now, we'll have another stack, which is the status stack, which is the success or failure of the most recently executed command. Now, the topmost command will be pulled out and pushed onto the execution stack. It is executed. It can look at the success state of the previous command if it wants to. The previous command's execution state is removed and then its own success state is pushed onto the stack. This means that I can push grammar commands onto the execution stack and capture the execution state. So if you want to have a composite command with a logical or directive, it means that we only need to keep executing them until one succeeds, and then we can unfold the current running statement with success. I actually have a basic prototype running here. As you can see, this kind of captures the feedback process required to execute a series of commands. And it should be quite powerful because we're going to be able to pause, rewind, and fast forward the execution. And as you can see, the state is there in the environment. So in theory, we can save and resume this as it executes. This also means that we should be able to have recursive execution, which opens up a whole other set of features. And I'll talk about that in the next video. So this is a relatively simple and almost mechanical process of execution. 
we should be able to freeze and manipulate execution as easily as we perform undo or redo. I will expand on that in the next video. There will also be a big hint in the next video as to where the CLI is heading and why I'm doing things in this way. For now, goodbye, cruel world.